coming out. Joining us now, Dave Sears, retired Navy SEAL, author of Smarter, Not Harder, 17 SEAL Maxims to Elevate Critical Thinking and Prosper in Business and Life, along with Army Major General Vincent Bowles, two-star retired in 2009. His last Army assignment in the Pentagon was to oversee logistics operations and readiness for the 1.1 million soldiers who went into both Iraq and Afghanistan. Gentlemen, appreciate you both uh, being with us. Uh, Dave, first to you. All right, is there any hope militarily, uh, or do we have any assets still in Afghanistan to help get this woman out? So many like her? Uh, right now, I don't think there's much hope militarily. I think that there's a capability militarily, but there's no will to use the military capability. So it takes political will to use that. Uh, certainly, we could begin to get these people out, but the political will is not there to use the military element of national power, in, in my estimation. Uh, General, uh, you spent so much time at the Pentagon, uh, and I'm interested in sort of your assessment of how our sort of nation's top defense officials, the secretary and the chairman who briefed today, what they're saying between the lines. We'll play you the sound bites, and then you can interpret them for us. Take a listen. I will always be proud of the part that we played in this war. But we shouldn't expect Afghan war veterans to agree any more than any other group of Americans. I'm a professional soldier. I'm going to contain my uh, pain and anger and continue to execute my mission. Feels like there's so much more that General Milley wants to say that he's holding back. Fair assessment? I, I would say that is fair. Both he and uh, Secretary Austin uh, commanded troops, uh, served in there, walked those hills and did that kind of work. Uh, to see how this has unfolded so quickly uh, has to hit them in the heart. Yeah, you did hear the emotion um, with them. A big part of this, Dave, is this issue of what to do with the Taliban now and all the weapons they have. We've been talking about this now for the past couple of weeks. We heard from the Pentagon a couple of days ago, oh, don't worry, uh, they won't be able to fly the aircraft, they won't be able to figure out how to use anything. And then we saw this video, uh, not in Kabul, but a little bit farther out. That is a U.S. Black Hawk helicopter flying overhead of a convoy of U.S. MRAPs and Humvees all of which have the Taliban flag on them. It seems as though they, they managed to figure things out pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think specifically what they were addressing that was the equipment and material at Kabul airport. They didn't even touch or address. So what's the denominator when they tell you 27 Humvees were destroyed or demilitarized? Well, they don't tell you the denominator is 22,000 that are in the country. So there's a lot of this equipment that's out there and will be used and is dangerous. And they're trying to tamp it down and say it's inconsequential. Well, it's not inconsequential. This matters. It seems, though, General, it's going to make it awfully difficult with the, the Taliban having all of these weapons and all of this equipment to launch any of the kind of rescue operations that Dave said were possible. It is going to make it more challenging, uh, and in the, especially in the near term, uh, until they start to sort out. They have to prove they can govern. They have to prove they can sustain these systems. And the one thing these people know is violence. Uh, and that's their go-to mechanism, what they'll do and how they'll deal with things. This gives them an additional capability for that. Dave, a big part of your mission, obviously, uh, as a SEAL is direct action. But a big, big part of the time that you were in Afghanistan, I know you spent time with the local Afghans, with meeting with village elders, trying to take on the Taliban, et cetera. Do you feel as though the Pentagon and, for that matter, the White House have a clear head about who the Taliban is that you knew and fought against? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think they have a clear head about who the Afghanis are, what the culture is in Afghanistan. And that's not just coming from me. You can go look at the Special Inspector General report that John Sopko just put out in August again, and it details how badly over 20 years we have messed this up, how much they have misunderstood the Afghan people, the Taliban, the enemy, the culture, the terrain, everything. It's been a debacle from the beginning. They have been fighting a Western war against something that they don't understand. General, what would it take, you think, for us to hear from either Lloyd Austin or from General Milley, who we understand perhaps did not give the advice to the president that he took or that he eventually decided on, didn't advise the course of action? What would it take for them, you think, to speak out at some point, or will they just never do it? Uh, it would take an awful lot for them to speak out. I think what it would take is if they really thought 
that uh, they were being completely disregarded. It's one thing to be disregarded. It's another thing to get the chance to go in, uh, put your point across to your boss, room to room, face to face, and then the boss say, well, I'm the boss, and here's what we're going to do. But if they were completely disregarded and not considered at all, I think that would be a tipping point. Uh, I wanted to pick up uh, something with you, Dave, that the general said. He said, uh, we shouldn't expect Afghan war veterans to agree any more than any other group of Americans. I'm wondering, he's sort of leaving this idea open that there's going to be lots of different opinions among vets, but so far the only opinion I've really heard among vets is the one that you've espoused. Have you seen any dissension in the ranks among your folks and friends on how they feel? No, I haven't, especially amongst the ground troops. I mean, I do think, you know, no offense to the major general, but we've seen this throughout. We have a leadership crisis. The generals tend to rally around each other. They sit on board positions and they get their this ring that they're in, this protective ring, and they tend not to criticize. So you won't hear much criticism from there, but from the ground troops, it's been unanimous. I'll tell you that. Uh, gentlemen, really appreciate your time. Dave Sears, Army Major General Vincent Bowles, who both walked and talked with us through the past couple of weeks and given us some fantastic perspective. Appreciate it, gentlemen. All the best. Take care, sir. All right. To you as well. Thanks, Up later, next. Man. New warning from the CDC ahead of the Labor Day travel. Does this foreshadow new vaccine passport requirements when we come back?